Here's some of the stories trending this week at NASA. When we explore, we make discoveries, and that's really the human element. Discovery is why we do science. A major scientific discovery was announced by NASA at a September 28th news conference. From its vantage point high above the Martian surface, NASA's Mars Reconnaissance Orbiter spacecraft has found the strongest evidence yet that under certain circumstances, liquid water has been found on Mars. Researchers say an imaging spectrometer on MRL detected signatures of hydrated minerals on slopes where downhill streaks known as recurring slope lineae are seen. These are dark streaks that form in late spring, grow through the summer, and then disappear by fall. In the past, RSL flows have been described as possibly related to liquid water, but the new finding of hydrated minerals is key evidence. Hydrated salts can lower the freezing point of liquid brine and produce liquid water. The existence of liquid water, even if it's super salty, briny water, gives the possibility that if there's life on Mars, that we have a way to describe how it might survive. NASA Chief Scientist Ellen Stofan testified during a September 29th hearing before the House Committee on Science, Space and Technology about astrobiology and the prospects for finding life beyond Earth in the next decade. With NASA's fleet of robotic spacecraft, space-based observatories, and technology being developed, it is very possible we could indeed discover some form of life in the next 10 to 20 years somewhere else in our solar system. A special VIP screening event of the 21st Century Fox movie, The Martian, took place September 29th at National Geographic's Grosvenor Auditorium in Washington, D.C. Real NASA data was used to make the movie, a fictional story about a stranded astronaut's fight to survive on Mars in the 2030s. The event featured remarks by NASA Administrator Charlie Bolden and other dignitaries, and a panel discussion with agency officials and some of the film's cast members about how accurately the movie reflects the challenges NASA faces as we prepare for real human exploration of the Red Planet in the 2030s. The Japan Aerospace Exploration Agency's unpiloted HTV-5 cargo craft left the International Space Station on September 28th, five weeks after delivering about five tons of supplies and experiments to the station. That delivery included materials for the TWINS study, a suite of investigations being conducted on the station with NASA astronaut Scott Kelly and on Earth at the same time with his identical twin Mark Kelly, a retired astronaut. A few days later, a Russian Progress resupply ship launched to the station from the Baikonur Cosmodrome in Kazakhstan. About six hours later, the Progress automatically docked to the Zvezda service module, delivering more than three tons of food, fuel, and supplies for the station crew. The September 27th supermoon, visible in the U.S. and much of the world, was the first in more than 30 years to occur at the same time as a full total lunar eclipse. NASA television aired live coverage of the event, during which Earth's shadow dimmed the larger-than-life face of the moon for more than an hour. This rare double celestial treat doesn't happen again until 2033. In recognition of National Hispanic Heritage Month, NASA's weekly series Space to Ground will be available in Spanish through October 12th. Espacio a Tierra, like the English language version, will update viewers about activities aboard the International Space Station. The effort is part of NASA's commitment to action for the White House Initiative on Educational Excellence for Hispanics, which is celebrating its 25th anniversary. And that's what's up this week at NASA. For more on these and other stories, follow us on social media and visit www.nasa.gov. twan